Hello and welcome to another floppy deep dive. I've had several requests asking me to show how I make my D64 files and G64 files using the Ultimate 2 Plus in my Zoom floppy. So I want to make a quick little tutorial here just to show you how I do it and how easy it is and how fast it is. So you can back up these discs that are 30 years old and get them so you can play them on Vice and emulation or put them on your SD card reader or your Pi 50, 1541, whatever you need your D64 files for, that is what we're trying to do. My main thing is the reason I back it up is I just want to preserve these floppies. They're over 30 years old. These are my floppies that I collected back when I was in the 80s and a kid and was calling up on modems and calling BBSs and downloading at 300 baud, 1200 baud, and taking forever to fill these up. So there's no way in the world I'm gonna get rid of these and I wanna preserve them as long as I can. So what I do is I put them on D64 using these two methods. So I hope that you enjoy this video and you learn something and please subscribe if you like this. And so let's get started. So I'm using my Ultimate 2 Plus to make my D64 files and I have my USBs plugged in that's where it's going to be saved and over here I have my 1541 uh, I keep my the top off the lid just because I have access to it when you're doing so many games like I'm doing your head can get dirty real easy so it's easier just to leave it off so you can do a quick clean if for some reason the drive starts acting up on you. So I just leave it up while I'm doing my D64 files, knocking them out on the Ultimate 2. And now I'm going to show you how I go about doing it using the Ultimate 2 and just how easy it is to create D64 files using the Ultimate plus so we're going to go into the ultra 2 plus and those are just listing my USBs I have it on there so when I go in here I am going to select F5 and on F5 I go to ulti copy 8 and when I select ulti copy 8 immediately it starts reading the floppy that I have in my 1541 and right now it's reading all the tracks and sectors stars means that it reads it's perfect if you get like a dash or a minus sign that means there's an error when you're doing it so potentially there's something on your floppy or there's an error on your disk and it always has been but so you don't want the minus signs and done. We just did a complete one. I switch it and name it to my floppy and what how I have the floppy labeled. And once I put in the ID, my 3V, I save it. And now it's saved to my USB and it's asking me I want to do another one. So I'll flip the floppy over, say yes. And it starts reading it again and knocks it all out again. And now it's reading another floppy. And I'm just creating D64 files here. So when I go into there and I'm going to look at my floppies, it's going to list everything that I have on the directory. And you see how fast it is. It's just, like I said, knocking out these tracking sectors really quick. Again, I'm going to name it. And if I wanted to do another one, I could do another one. So I could just keep rolling along. Now this here, this is just what I've got on my USBs. I've named everything floppy along with the number because I have all my floppies ID'd. So the one that I just did was the floppy 3V. So I'm going to mount that for you guys so you can see it. And 
And so I'm doing a directory. Just This is what's in right now, my 1541. So I'm just going to do a comparison for you guys. Oh, let me flip that over. So this is the one. This was the front side. So this is the Blitzkrieg, what I had on the front. Now I'm going to do a directory of my 9, which is the mounted image I have on my uh, Ultra 9 Plus. Sorry, the screen cut off a little bit there. But it's the exact same thing. So it made an exact image of my floppy and now it's in D64 format. Looks like a, you know just a regular floppy. So now I can access all these games and able to play it. Now I'll go to the other side and show you that it, it worked exactly the same thing. So I mount this on here. Uh, we'll do a directory. So there's my back side of my floppy. And now I will do a directory of my mounted image that I have on 9. And I will show you it's the exact same thing. And there they are. So it's really that easy. I, I just did one floppy front and back that quickly using the Ulta copy on there. So next I'm going to go and talk about my zoom floppy which I have hooked up to my 1571 and again I have the lid off the top so it's easier to clean if I have any issues dealing with floppies that are 30 years old they can make the rehead dirty quite quickly so always have your handy dandy uh, alcohol wipes and q-tips so you can clean off the top and then this here is my zoom floppy that I have with the uh, micro to USB connected to my PC. So one of the things I learned about the Zoom Floppy is that that does not come with the Zoom Floppy. So if you don't have the right connector, you need to make sure you have the micro connector to USB so it can connect directly in there. And then the other connectors, just like how you connect your any of your 1541s, 1571s directly to your Commodore. You don't even have to have a Commodore to be able to make D64 files. You could just have a drive and a Zoom floppy connected to your PC along with floppy disk. And you can make D64 files and G64 files for ones that have protection. I use the 1571 with the Zoom floppy because it's faster and it works with the protected files when you have the original, uh, the 1571's best to use with the zoom floppy and that is something else that I've learned from being on the Facebook groups and it truly is pretty easy to do I use the nib read to be able to do that and I'm going to show you that now over here on the screen so now we're going to go into zoom floppy and I'm going to show you how the zoom floppy works and this is just a GUI interface for the CBM Win that I'm using. And showing the directory, and you just hit the over arrow and say OK. And you type in the name that you want to name that Zoom floppy. And you always want to end it in the .d64 just to show what kind of file that it's doing. And so now it's doing it. Now it's reading each track, each sector, one by one. And it's bringing this floppy over into D64 format. And it's working just like the Ultimate 2 Plus was, where, where we over there, we saw the asterisks. This one, you just, I just get the box. I think there's other GUI interfaces out there that could show you things. But on this one, it just shows you this box that it's working. And my 1571 is running right now, and it's going through track by track by track, sector by sector, reading it, creating that D64 image. And it's done. And that's how fast the front floppy, uh, reading the front of the floppy is and making a D64 image. So I'm done. It gives that warning that it made it bigger than the 664, which is fine. Say OK. So now we're going to do the back side. We'll read the directory of the, this floppy. Again, push the over arrow and yes. And we're going to type in the name of the floppy 
Again, always remembering the type of file, so you will have to put the .d64. Select OK. And now again, it is copying over, or not, copying and making a D64 file directly of this floppy that I have in there. I don't want to have a lot of dead air here, but I want to show you, I, instead of me speeding it up and showing you, you know, jumping right to the end, I want to show you how long it takes, that it really just isn't a long process to be able to do the floppies. Again, you don't even need a Commodore 64 to do this. You just need a 1541 or a 1571 that work with the Zoom floppy interface with your PC. So it makes it just so easy, and it, and, it, and it's done. So that was that's how quick it is. Uh, now we can go in and see a little bit more information, and let, let me show you exactly where on the directory. Actually, let me open up Vice, and I'm going to show you in Vice the files that we just made. So we just did the front and the back. So I'm going to attach the image, and here's the latest image that I have. So I'm going to attach this image on here. And I'm going to load it up. There's the one with the bangers and mash on it. So I go into file and I'm going to attach my warp speed cartridge to speed up the loading a little bit for myself. Warp speed works a lot like the Epix fast load cartridge if you're familiar with that. It uses the percentages and the plus signs. I'm in not plus signs, dollar signs. So anyway, I'm going to go up to bangers and mash and we'll load this one up. Again, using the percentage sign. And I'll run it. And there you go. There's bangers and mash. So it works just fine. Loading up uh, our image that we made using the Zoom floppy. And there's the game. So the D64 files, when you do the Zoom floppy, they, it just works perfectly. Uh, there's other tools that we'll get. I'll get into more to show you that you make sure you didn't have any errors. But we'll go ahead and reset this here. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the back of it now. I attached the other image to it. And so we'll add that to there. And there you go. There's the EagleSoft logo showing that it loaded up. And here it is. Here's Robot Rascals working just perfectly. just to prove that it's not just a copy of the directory that it's making, that it's actually carrying over the data and it works perfectly here in Vice. Thus, I could make the D64 files and bring them over to my Ultimate Plus 2 Plus and use the D65 on my original equipment and load it up. So if anything ever happens to any of these floppies, I have a nice, good backup, clean backup where I could still play this game and also move them over to the floppies. That would be another uh, that would be another tutorial one day to see moving them from D64 over to floppies, which is also possible to do and, do, and, and vice versa. But today we're just focusing on making the D64 files and making the G64 files. So now I'm going to get into showing you using the command prop how you make G64 files using nib tools and all I'm doing is changing my directory where my nib tools are located which is on my download directory within my command prompt so I will drag that over to it and so here in my command prompt now I am where my nib tools are located so I can create a g64 file here's a directory of my nib tools directory and it saves the G64 directly to that nib tools directory is how I have it set up. So I'm going to do a whole brand new floppy and I'm just going to be doing the front side. So I'm going to show you the directory on the front side so you can see what we're copying over. So that's what we're going to be making a G64 of. This isn't a protective disk or original or anything, but you could still make a G64 of anything. So to do that, you would type in nib read. And then I always put the minus E 
and then 25 or 30. And what that E2530 is, is how many times you want it to read a track if it gets an error. And then also then I name it with the .nib uh, file extension. And it starts. So now it's going through each one of these tracks. If it encountered an error, it would keep trying to read it 25 times. And that's how you, you can eliminate errors if you have a floppy that has a lot of errors. This one actually is really clean. But it would go through and try to do it 25 times. And sometimes that takes the error away. So now we've created the file. It shows it there. And to convert it over to a G64, we just do nib convert, C-O-N-V. Type in the name of the nib file and then type in the name with the .g64. And just like that, it converts it over to a G64 image. And like I said, I, it's on the same directory as my nib tools. So there it is. We just created it. So let me just, what I want to do is I'm going to mount this image on here. Let me show you the directory of the G64 image we just created. And there's the directory. So Airwolf 2, we'll go ahead and go in there and get in here. I'm going to put get my warp copy, uh, warp speed back up so you can see that. Do a directory and let's load up Airwolf 2. Again, works just like the fast load cartridge. So I'm going to do the percentage with the asterisk. And there's Airwolf 2. So the G64 file came over just perfect. Works just like the D64 file. I know there's some uh, out there that cannot handle the G64 files. Ultimate 2 Plus can handle G64 files just fine. Vice can handle it just fine. But there are there was a new one and it escapes me the name of it off the top of my head that cannot handle the G64. But I want to show you something else. So one of the tools I use when I create the D64 and the G64 files is the Stir Master. And what the Stir Master can do a lot of different things. And that'd be a whole nother thing going through all this stuff. But the main thing I use it for is I want to see that I had no errors on my image. So if I load that up, my G64 file, and I'm looking at each of my track and sectors, you can see it's completely clean. If it had an error, it would have a number on one of those circles, and, it, and then you can go in and see what kind of error it was. But that was a completely good copy with no errors. And when you're trying to save your floppies, you definitely don't want to copy it over with a bunch of errors and have bad data. So now we'll look at the other ones, the D64s that I made. And here's that robot rascals. And we'll go look at that errors. And there's the BAM file and perfectly clean. No, no, there's no numbers on any of the circles. So that is a good, sweet copy. <laughs> so anyway, let's look at the other one. See if we had any issues on that one. And here's the other one. And let's look at that one. And again, no numbers. Everything's nice and clean. So when you're doing your backups, like I said, this is a great tool to see if you have any errors. Sometimes you're supposed to have errors. On the originals, the originals have errors on them. So you would see some errors. But when you're copying over the ones that are your copies, they should not have errors on there. And doing them with that E25 where it reads it multiple times, that will help eliminate a lot of the different errors. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, and the few tips and tricks that I've learned since I've started making D64 and G64 files using Ultimate 2 Plus and the Zoom Floppy. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down there in the comments and I'll do my best to answer everybody's question. And I hope you learned something and thank you for stopping in and for another Floppy Deep Dive.